Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and uh, I had a subscriber make a point. They got a little upset a little bit and uh, felt their personal anecdote uh, mattered more than science, and they're, they're kind of almost like anti-science on this. But I'm going to flip it in here, and uh, let's talk about it for a bit. So let me put on my plus five hat of weapon smithing, work on a little bit of crafting. And you know what? You can take something negative like this that a person, you know, doesn't seem to actually understand how these things work. And, uh, you know what, let's turn it into a learning experience for everyone, rather than make us a personal attack on this person, because there's no need to. Uh, they legitimately don't understand, and that's okay. Not everyone has good science education. Uh, they don't always understand how these things work, and that this science is not an attack um, upon their results in any way. And I had to question this person further, and they basically had said that the reason they know that muscles continue to grow past 48 hours is they had done an arm workout before, and five days later, their arm measured half an inch bigger. And therefore, <laughs> that means more than the science. All right, guys, so um, the funny thing there is that that person doesn't understand that that's not measuring muscle fiber growth. When we're talking about growth, we're not talking about just the external visual of what you see because there's a lot of factors involved with visual changes in muscle tissue, and that's what people need to understand. Uh, it's not the same thing as actual muscle fibers growing. You know, muscle fibers can stay the same size while uh, muscles shift back and forth within the same week in terms of visible size and external measurement. Why? Because muscles are mostly water. And fluid balance can change back and forth. You know, the amount of glycogen and water that a muscle holds can be contingent upon how much uh, blood sugar you've burned off, how much glu glucose you've burned in a muscle. You know, you can make a muscle smaller temporarily by training it right if you deplete the glycogen in a muscle is it isn't it going to look a little smaller because that glycogen gets burned you're burning energy in that muscle while training it and glycogen attracts water it attracts several parts of water for every part of glycogen so again this is basic science and you know what you can carb load and make a muscle look bigger and fuller also right everyone familiar with that you've all done it you've all seen it yourselves that after a big heavy carb meal sometimes you wake up the next day and a muscle looks a lot bigger. But does that mean that the actual muscle fibers have grown? No. But the muscle fibers are going to determine maximum potential. And what I mean is a muscle that has gotten bigger through training the actual fibers, the tissue, the protein, contractile proteins in there, uh, are going to determine the maximum size it can get even from gl uh, glycogen loading. Because you can't take someone who has a 12-inch arm and glycogen load them up to an 18-inch arm, right? You can't do it. But someone who has a 17 inch arm, you might be able to carb load them up enough to bring it up to 17 and a half for a short period of time. And also, training can shift that back and forth, meaning sometimes uh, a really high volume arm workout will deplete glycogen, and then you can overfeed that muscle later with extra carbs, and it will super compensate sometimes the other direction. It's a very short lived thing, it's not permanent. Because you guys all know you lose that later sometimes. But it's called a super compensation effect. The muscle's been depleted a bit, trained hard. You train it, then it grows, and then you carb load it. And it will sometimes temporarily swell up and get a lot bigger. This is something that bodybuilders and models work with a lot. Most of you are familiar with that. When they want to look their biggest, they deplete themselves. They actually oftentimes go do higher rep depletion workouts for all their muscles. And then they carb load before they go step up on a stage or do a photo shoot. Why? Because it temporarily makes them bigger than they normally are. Did they gain muscle from it? Did they grow? Not in the traditional sense. They created a temporary swelling effect and it works. It's very effective. Very, very effective for creating a short-term illusion because you are swelling the muscles full of water. Um, but it's temporary. Muscle growth is long-lasting, true muscle growth, tissue growth, and that's what we're talking about with these studies. So when I say that a muscle has gotten uh, only grows gets bigger for up to 48 hours after you train it i'm talking about the actual long-term internal growth of the muscle tissue fibers uh, the actual parts of the muscle that contract the parts of the muscle that give you strength the parts of the muscle that give you endurance because i mean if you're running a marathon you know that's muscle fibers contracting right that's not the, <laughs> the glycogen or intermuscular fat or anything else squishing around the muscles are moving it the actual fibers are contracting the stamina fibers um, the what contracts and moves a big heavy weight is going to be you know the the faster twitch power and strength fibers that's what's moving the weight that's what contracts that works what we're talking about that contractile part of the muscle that gives you the performance 
those things only grow for 48 hours, up to 48 hours after you train them. And that's not my opinion. And that's something that you can't judge externally. Meaning if you're not using a system of measurement to measure it, um, you have no way to determine if it's grown. You're just looking in the mirror and that could be all sorts of water fluid uh, and fluid balance going back and forth. But the thing is that people need to understand if they're using a tape measure, aren't they trying to replicate science? They're trying to use a system of measurement, the only system they have available to themselves to check for a change. Um, that's still take, trying to take a scientific approach to things, isn't it? You're taking measurements. You're trying to track measurements, quantify data over time with things that you can measure with the tools that you have available. That's what science does. So that's no different. The only difference is when we talk about things like scientific studies on this, they have more expensive, more accurate tools to measure these things. That's all that is. That just means that these people have more resources because you might only be able to afford a tape measure. Uh, you can't afford a whole laboratory. You can't afford a CAT scan machine or an MRI machine to go in and look at the inside of that muzzle, muscle and take really sophisticated small measurements internally. Um, you can't afford to do a muscle biopsy yourself to go in and extract muscle fibers and see how much they've grown before and after training and how many hours when you pull different biopsies they've stopped growing and responding to. You don't have, as an anecdotal person, an average person, unless you're a multimillionaire, have access to the resources to take those type of measurements. The scientists do. At universities, they have the actual equipment to go in and measure. So think of it this way. They're not doing something so different than what you're doing with the tape measure they're just using a much much better more accurate tape measure that's capable of actually measuring what you want to look at internally that's all it is think of it that way science when they're doing that they're just having a really good expensive tape measure they can do a far better job because they can measure the stuff going on inside and see what it's doing and that's not meant as an attack on someone's anecdote but by that same token if you go take 200 test subjects you do muscle biopsies and MRIs and they determine that everyone stops growing somewhere between 30 and 48 hours as a result of training. That's not a negative against your anecdote. That doesn't mean that you didn't super compensate from your training later. It just means that they're trying to get good, useful information to help you. Because the thing is, when people are studying this stuff, scientists are studying this, they're not trying to study it just to be dicks. They're not trying to study it to call people idiots. They're studying it because there are athletes and people out there who have genuine needs to know how muscle growth works inside. They need to know this to develop better systems. Uh, because, again, a lot of sports have millions or billions of dollars invested in them. There's a lot of money on the line. And if you can figure out the mechanisms and the pathways and the times that it muscles grow and adapt, which is what the science is trying to do, you can make better athletes. All right, you can make better athletes. Better athletes are going to make millions of dollars more. Better athletes are going to make a difference at the world level when you're competing against other countries for gold medals. This is serious business. There is actually legitimate money involved in understanding these things. It's not, it's not a small deal when you have sports that have millions of dollars of contracts for every single player out there. Understanding how muscles grow and adapt is actually big business. There's big money involved in understanding these things. The benefit that you guys get, people further down the chain, is that because so many millions of dollars are involved in this and there is a genuine interest in understanding adaptation for sports purposes, that you can all, as people who maybe aren't ever going to make millions of dollars, get access to that science. It gives you an advantage because while this stuff is being studied for other purposes, it's still being studied and it's studied by people with a real financial interest in knowing the truth because there's a lot of money here. And when there's a lot of money involved in anything, people damn well want to know the truth so they can make more money. Think about it. But that takes you, the person further down the chain who maybe just wants bigger biceps, just wants bigger pecs. These are tools that you can take from all these multi-million dollar studies and uh, stuff being studied for big money sports and everything. And you can take that same information they're pulling to help you understand what's going on in your body better. And it's, it's so weird when people have a defensive stance against it. Well, I don't care what the science says. Well, why not? This science is being funded by the NFL. This science is being funded by the Olympic uh, 
athlete teams. This, this stuff is being studied so that top-level athletes can get better, can do what they need to do more effectively so they can make millions and millions of more dollars, so they can earn more gold medals, so they can win Super Bowls. This is free information being funded by big-ass businesses so that they can find the truth that you can then use to help you. You shouldn't be upset or offended by it. How You shouldn't be upset that people are trying to study these things. This is stuff that can trickle down that other people have spent millions of their own dollars on that you can benefit from for free. Why get defensive about it? Why get upset about it? Use it to your advantage. Why wouldn't you? It's free. Other people have already paid the money. So this whole idea, though, that uh, it gets crazy, this anti-science idea you see every now and then, that when we go study stuff and all these athletes in the lab, and these aren't always just uh, noobs being studied. Oftentimes, these studies are even done on professional athletes. These are done sometimes on NFL players. These are done on Olympic athletes sometimes so that we can understand how to make them better. Well, if we can understand how to make them better, it can be useful to you. And you know what? At the end of the day, no matter how you view it, the science who is actually going in and pulling muscle biopsies and MRIs of the muscles of everyone from noobs to professional athletes is going to get more accurate information and more useful data than what you're going to pull with a tape measure, than what you're going to pull from your own personal observations. At the end of the day, guys, they're going to get more useful information than you are. Don't be offended by it. Take their information that other people have paid for and use it to your advantage. Why wouldn't you? It's useful to you. Use it. Uh, you, you don't need to just take your own personal anecdote. The science has gotten a lot better than it used to be. We've come a long way in the modern world with the new technology we have. Look how amazing technology has gotten today. I mean, look at the fact of what you carry around for your iPhone or whatever now, your Android is a super, super computer by 20 year ago technology. That same level of technology has carried over into our ability to look inside of a muscle and see what's going on. That is extremely useful. Uh, now that we're really studying this stuff closer, that's extremely useful for you guys who are trying to make gains. It gives us a better understanding of what's going on. Uh, don't be upset by it. You shouldn't be any more upset by that science trying to understand that than you should be about the fact that your iPhone gets more awesome every single year. It's just technology. It's not a bad thing. There's no need to be anti-science uh, when it comes to understanding adaptation to training. Embrace it. It can only help you. It's not going to hurt you in any way. All right, guys. Well, that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.